Hey there guys, great to see you. Well, if you know what I mean, I can't really see you, but you can see me, which is probably the important thing for the moment. And uh, a huge welcome to the Holy Shed, the littlest parish in Christendom. And as we know, Easter was last weekend. Easter Day was last Sunday. Um, but the season of Easter goes on for quite a while. Another six weeks, in fact, until Ascension Day. Some would say up to Pentecost, but you know, that's all boring church nitpicking. The thing is that today uh, we're going to continue the Easter theme that I started on last time, looking at the possible meanings of this phrase, practicing resurrection. Now, we learned in our last Holy Shed that this phrase uh, is from a poem. It comes at the end, actually, of an amazing poem by the writer, environmentalist and farmer Wendell Berry. And the poem is magnificently called Manifesto, the Mad Farmer's Liberation Front. And since the actor Evan Kuhn's rendition of it is so awesome and there's such a lot to take in, I thought you wouldn't mind seeing it again. So I'm going to start by playing this uh, amazing rendition of uh, the poem by Wendell Berry uh, as given to us by Evan Kuhn. So enjoy this. Love the quick profit. The annual raise, vacations with pay, want more of everything ready-made, and be afraid to know your neighbors and to die. And you will have a window in your head. Not even your future will be a mystery anymore. Your mind will be punched in a card and, and shut away in a little drawer. And when they want you to buy something, they will call you. When they want you to die for profit, they will let you know. So friends, Every day do something that won't compute. Love the Lord, love the world, work for nothing. Take all that you have and be poor. Love someone who doesn't deserve it. Denounce the government and embrace the flag. Hope to live in that free republic for which it stands. Give your approval to everything you cannot understand. Praise ignorance for what man has not encountered, he has not destroyed. Ask the questions that have no answers. Best in the millennium, plant sequoias. Say that your main crop is the forest that you did not plant, that you will not live to harvest. Say that the leaves are harvested when they have rotted into the mold. Call that profit. Prophesy such returns. Put your faith in the two inches of humus that builds under the trees every thousand years. Listen to Carrion. Put your ear close and hear the faint chattering of the songs that are to come. Expect the end of the world. Laugh. Laughter is immeasurable. Be joyful, though you have considered the facts. And so long as women don't go cheap for power, please women more than men. Ask yourself, will this satisfy a woman satisfied to bear a child? Will this disturb the sleep of a woman near to giving birth? Go with your love to the fields. Lie easy in the shade. Rest your head in her lap. Swear allegiance to what is nighest your thought. As soon as the generals and the politicos can predict the motions of your mind, lose it. Leave it as a sign to mark the false trail, the way you didn't go. Be like the fox who makes more tracks than necessary, some in the wrong direction. Practice resurrection. can't tell you how much I love that poem and how much I love Evan Kuhn's um, <clears throat> reading of it. Um, basically, the whole poem is an exposition of the final line, which is practice resurrection. Um, in a way, that's an alternative title at the end. And it's Wendell Berry's commentary on what practicing resurrection means, so far as he can see, which is basically you know, live from a different place. It's about living a simple life connected to the land in his case. Um, he talks about doing what is right and what will last into the future, a future that we won't see. He talks about caring for people beyond politics and living into the mystery of life. 
And he sums all of this up, all the various facets of living with the final line, practice resurrection. That is what all that goes before is about. It's an exposition of that phrase, practice resurrection. Live well, live intentionally, live for others as well as yourself. Uh, because this is all part of the resurrection to, to, too. So today, I want to distill some of my thoughts evoked by this poem into six basic points. Uh, first of all, in the midst of death, choose life. So, do you remember the pandemic? Of course you do. But it does seem quite a long way away now, doesn't it? It seems like a bit of a dream, don't you think? Um, you know... Can you believe that we went through all of that stuff, not knowing what was happening, not knowing how or when it was going to end? And um, do you remember all those ghastly, ghastly statistics on the television night after night, the hundreds of anonymous, real people who were losing their lives just daily? I mean, oh my goodness. But now... We're living through a different but equally, I think, scary, horrible time of death all around. Uh, I mean, Gaza in particular, but, but not just there. There's no getting away from it. The, the world is feeling quite, squir quite squirrely, feeling quite scary just now. And, um, and we also don't have any idea what's going to happen next, how much more is going to um, explode out of a situation that just came to us overnight back in November. Um, imagine the disciples, October actually, yes. Imagine the disciples for a moment watching from far away or close up to the arrest and the, and the trial, the condemnation of Jesus. Um, I mean, imagine their fear, their whole world just falling down around them. And it can feel a little bit like that just now, actually, that you're just not quite sure which bit of masonry up there is going to fall down next. And, um, you know, you are more than forgiven for feeling a little bit intimidated by it all, um, if you're anything like me. So here's what practicing resurrection means for starters, that when death is all around, do something, however small, every day, that brings life, that introduces life and hope into the world. Maybe just to someone, you know, choose life over and in the midst of death. And listen, in challenging times, even more than in ordinary times, live intentionally. You know, think about how you want to live, how you want to be in the world, who you want to be in the world. Uh, who and what you don't want to be. I think these are times when we need to be contemplating, be contemplating these things, to live intentionally. I have to remind myself, it's part of being an Easter person, I think, I have to remind myself that life is a precious gift uh, that I definitely don't want to squander, especially, you know, when you see <laughs> inevitably your days are diminishing as time goes on. And so it feels, of course, it was always the same level of preciousness, but it feels more sort of more precious when you realise that life is sort of moving on. And yes, it's hard. Uh, and there are obstacles and complications and the world has a lot of darkness in it. Um, so it's not an easy thing, but I still want to choose to live my life the way I want to live it. Um, I want to be intentional, not unwitting. Uh, I want to choose resurrection, the way of life and not death. Which brings me to my second point, which is to arise with courage and do the right thing. Uh, I mean, sometimes resurrection looks like, I think, <laughs> if I can put it this way, having the courage to get out of bed. That's true, really, isn't it? Because sometimes, you know... Um, the, the dark thoughts of the night can be lingering in the morning and, you know, it can be hard. We need, the, we need courage to get out of bed, not just physically, but, you know, to truly get out of bed, to face the world. 
Um, you know, we need courage sometimes to answer the phone, to write that email, to face that person that I don't really wish to face, to have that conversation. Sometimes resurrection means having the courage to stretch my legs, literally or metaphorically, you know, to, to get up and do that task that I've been putting off, sort out those affairs that I've been leaving at one side in some way. Uh, sometimes practicing res resurrection looks like sitting back, taking a literal or a metaphorical nap, you know, instead of being white knuckled, keeping a grip on everything and feeling that that's the way that we'll get through. Sometimes resurrection means dying to my own ego, dying to my need to be right, dying to my need to be attractive, not too hard in my case, uh, <laughs> dying to my need to be successful, to be in control, dying to my inner critic, my compulsion to try and be a good Christian, whatever that means. Choosing life sometimes means embracing the death of things that need to die. You know, no Good Friday, no Easter, no death, no rising. These things, you know, kind of are all interlocked. And that reminds me that resurrection means uh, living into your vision or your sense of how the world should be. In other words, let's stop sleepwalking through situations or circumstances that we don't like or things we don't really agree with. Um, and live into life, lean into life as we know it should be. It's easy, isn't it, to just sort of back off, uh, to just nod off, to just yeah, let everything go on. Um, instead of being the agents in life that I think we are called to be by virtue of our faith, but by virtue of being responsible human beings in the world. There are so many things that go against the grain for anyone who basically gives a monkeys, you know. I mean, look, for months now, we have been watching the dreadful situation in Gaza evolve, or is it dissolve, you know, it's, it's sink deeper and deeper into the depths of despair. And as a result, you know, we've been watching tensions mounting in the whole region across the Middle East, not to mention, you know, all the other horrible situations in the world. And... We're going through all of that and then suddenly we're in Easter when Christ conquers darkness and evil and we celebrate the resurrection. And we're having to ask, how the hell does this relate to any of what is going on in the world? And it all brings before me the question of how I can live more effectively, more intentionally into the resurrection. How can I practice or live into what resurrection means? How can I help our world to inch its way forward just a little bit more towards the way of wholeness and completeness that, that God intends for our world? In Wendell, Perry, Wendell Berry's poem, uh, he urges us to plant sequoias. Now, these are the great redwood trees that can grow up to the height of 26-storey buildings and live for, you know, a couple of thousand years. To plant a sequoia is to acknowledge that you will never see it grow to its full height. You will never see the effects that planting uh, that one tree will have on a whole ecosystem. To plant the tree, uh, to plant any tree, is, I think, to acknowledge, to believe that generations will come after us. And therefore, it's worth planting for them. So, you know, to plant a sequoia is choosing life and paving the way for others to do the same. But it's not just about trees, is it? Because I don't know about you, but I haven't planted a lot of sequoias and I don't think I'm going to. But this is just a metaphor for the fact that we have the opportunity to sow seeds into the world, which will have implications and repercussions that we will never see. Um, so it's an acknowledgement that practicing resurrection isn't just about me. It's about something infinitely greater. It's about people who uh, will, will follow after me. So when I plant tiny seeds, 
when I do the right thing, say, when I, you know, speak something of healing or reconciliation or whatever into the world, I can never know what may grow from this thing, which I will never see the fruit of. Um, this is all connected to hope, which I talked about last week. Hope, uh, I mean, I've said this many times, hope is not a mere emotion. It's not, I feel hopeful, um, you know. It isn't a mere emotion um, of something that we may or may not feel. Hope isn't trying to keep positive. It's not a synonym for optimism. Um, I am a naturally optimistic person. The glass is mostly about to spill over as far as you know my way of looking at life is concerned. And it's a great thing. It's, I think it's a mentally healthy thing to be positive and optimistic in life. But hope is not that. Hope is more than just a positive mindset. Hope is basically a commitment, uh, an act, or many small acts of defiant imagination, even when that feels like a daft thing to be doing or thinking about. In other words, hope requires a choice, a decision, to move or lean or step forward in a particular direction. Resurrection means living toward other possibilities, you could say, you know, different futures. Do you remember all that stuff that we've talked about in the Holy Shed about process and process theology, which we will undoubtedly come back to again at some point. Um, but we've, we've seen how, you know, everything is in a state of becoming and the outcome is not automatically predetermined. Um, and God is in this whole process luring the world toward goodness luring inviting us drawing us to be part of that goodness to be something of the change that we wish to see and that god wishes to see in the world um i'd like to listen to this lovely song i think that it's about being kind and i think that being kind um can be like a little shard of resurrection a little shaft of light from resurrection into our world and so if you think about that you know that every every single act of kindness that you do is just a little opening of the door to what it's, it's practicing resurrection have a listen to this lovely song Thinking and I'm thinking, what's the reason why we holding back from being kind? What's the disease? But then I sense we are fine. It'll all happen one small step at a when time. When the world is full of violence and it needs a little kindness, I just sit and pray in silence, and God shows me the signs. Open my eyes, realize we are fine. One small act at a Last time Last night I'm walking home and the homeless man says hello With a smile to let me know that he's got a lot of hope He says have faith young man, we are fine The world is kind One small act at a time Small acts we do together Even though maybe alone changes the world for the better So we can call it home And this is life as we know When our hearts are aligned The magic that unfolds one small act at a time Throw your hearts up, let it fly high Let your love for all the world spread through the sky Let it drop down, let it all go Spreading kindness to every single living soul Can you see your love for me shining through? Cause what you see in me, I can see in you And soon enough, you and me will be out of time Will be all we can leave behind. Yeah, feeling grateful today. 
never thought this day would come Where I would feel it and say that each and every one of us Has paved the way doing good and now we're all just moving up When I'm kinda you, you pay it forward This is how we yeah. build trust Never had faith, but now I'm seeing you I, t- I wanna gift you my life Wanna spread love before I die Thank you God for finally letting me realize When I serve man, I'm really serving you in disguise Smiles everywhere cause now everybody's got the bug Ain't no life without the love If it is, it ain't no fun What we gonna do? Now just grab a friend and give a hug Spread it out real wide so everyone can be touched Show your hearts up, let it fly high Let your love for all the world spread through the sky Let it drop down, let it all go Spreading kindness to every single living soul Can you see your love for me shining through? Cause what you see in me, I can see in you And soon enough, you and me will be out of time goodness <laughs> i mean hey i should have just played that shouldn't i not bother talking i love that i mean nemo patel he's, he's got such passion and to see the way he gathers the kids um yeah what a jesus figure he is so my fourth point is live well for others as well as for yourself um as you may know the opening piece in my book OMG about Christian's Book of Prayers begins, Blessed are the giver shits, the ones who can't stand idly by while others suffer or the planet groans. Um, And I'd call that living well, you know, uh, living properly, living fully, living healthily for ourselves and for others. I'd call it practicing resurrection. And this is the choice that's before us all the time. It goes right back to you know, uh, Joshua in the, in, the, in the Old Testament saying, you know, I set before you, was it Moses? Life and death, you know, choose life. And um, that's the choice that's always there before us, you know. There is a way of living which is about coming more and more and more alive. Uh, there's another way of living that is actually be- more and more going into the shadows in which life retracts, uh, contracts, diminishes, still looks, you know, fully... Uh, uh, in in process on the surface but underneath we've contracted um living uh practicing resurrection is about coming you know life bursting forth all the time from the spirit within because we all get the chance to participate in resurrection but living in the power of a divine impulse toward a better world is what it's all about and when we live that way when we practice resurrection a little piece of the world is coming alive too, is being made whole. And who knows, you know, what that might lead to. It's quite clear to me that many people practice resurrection who may not consciously believe in God or consciously follow Christ and yet nevertheless experience that same spirit 
that lived in and through Christ and raised Christ from the dead. So finally, uh, well, I say finally, it's kind of not quite finally. Uh, but Wendell Berry's poem is an invitation to enter and revel in the mystery of life. Basically, uh, he's expanding on Paul's thought that the wisdom of God is foolishness to the world. He's calling us to get off the merry-go-round of supposed success and prosperity, which society, you know, so often promotes. Don't be afraid to go a different way, is what the poem is saying. Um, find what is authentic to you. Um, you know, don't be squeezed into the mould. That's what Paul says in Romans 12. Don't be squeezed into the mould of the world. And by the world, he's, he's speaking about those, the pressure to live in such a way that is basically the way of diminishment and death. You know, don't be pressed into that mould. Be authentic. Be yourself. Uh, the whole resurrection narrative in Scripture is itself um, a mystery. It makes no sense. You know, at a rational level, it makes no sense. The inconsistencies... Uh, in the different accounts are all too obvious for anyone with an open mind. I and mean, once you've committed yourself to a particular overlay or interpretation, that's one thing. But I think that once you move out of that, um, it makes no sense. Well, why, why should it? You know, uh, a body that can walk through walls and yet still be touched and felt, which can be present to people who spent years in its presence, but who couldn't recognise it on a nine-mile walk? You know, a body which can suddenly materialise uh, out of nowhere and yet also eat broiled fish. But you see, hey, none of this matters a jot to me because I'm not attempting to make rational sense of it. I'm not taking it all literally. I don't feel I need to or wish to. But I do believe in Christ's risen presence in the world. I believe in Christ's risen presence within us and among us. And that, to me, is what really matters. Um, I mean, I'm about as rational a person as you'll find. Just ask my wife. I love common sense. I love to reason about things. I believe in the power of critical thought, and I can't not do it. Um, I relish doubt and questioning. But... I also relish mystery, and life itself is a mystery on so many levels. Um, I love art and music and myth and story, um, which I enjoy reflecting on rationally, but I also love to set that aside and to immerse myself in these things non-rationally, which isn't irrational, but it's a deliberate choice that, you know, everything uh, the very gift of life cannot be encompassed by rationality. So as much as I will carry on reasoning about these things, I reach for something else, um, for, for the beyond. And this too is resurrection, seeing beyond the purely material, uh, the purely rational, seeing beyond this mortal coil, even though we have no way of reasoning uh, sensibly about that. But then mystery isn't, isn't about uh, being able to rationally encompass something. OK, so I said nearly finally because my actual final thought um, <clears throat> is to defy the voices of despair. Practice, practice, practice resurrection. See, friends, don't let gloomy times define who you are. You know, they can do that. You know, the, just the very ether around us and what's going on there can press us in and define us. Uh, don't, don't allow that to happen. Don't let your own perceived failure in whatever it is in life define who you are. Don't let society's notions of beauty or success or prosperity define who you are. Don't let someone else's interpretation of God or of scripture, or of religion, define who you are. Basically, what I'm doing is a recruitment call for the Mad Farmer Liberation Front. <laughs> Practice resurrection. Um, there's such freedom and liberty, and that lovely image that I used 
uh, at the start of this time of, of the, the tree where the branches, uh, where the leaves uh, are falling off. Well, normally we think of the leaves falling off and the thing is all dying to the ground. But in that image, the leaves are turning into, into birds and flying off and it's got that sense of freedom about it. So here's a prayer about the magic of stones, which has on many occasions helped me uh, in the pursuit of and the practice of resurrection. It's one of my favourite things, collecting stones at the seaside. Some rough and jagged, chips from an old block. Others smooth as silk and delectable to the touch. I like to gather them, fill my pockets, not sure why, though I love to keep a special stone for someone special. Can they really cry out to you, these stones, each in their own way? I know they sing your praise. I've heard them many times when the waves wash over them, making them shuffle and tumble and chime gleefully. What is that if it isn't praise? I'm also pretty sure that they pray for us when we hold them in, in our palms when not sure what to say. Maybe it's their ancient wisdom, millions of years witnessing dinosaurs, ice ages, and kingdoms come and go. I just know that feeling a single stone, the only one in the world like it, in the palm of my hand, makes me feel that I too am held. There you go. Uh, I'll be posting that on Facebook uh, later on tonight or tomorrow. Um, and of course you can buy the book. Uh, but let's finish with a toast. If you've got something to hand, I have a cup of tea here, which is still just about warm. So um, I want to propose a toast to resurrection as a living reality in our world. Uh, a toast to all who, in their own way, practice resurrection. Open little doors for the life of Christ to be felt and experienced in the world. A toast to holy defiance. Hope in the face of despair to life. Lachaim. There you go. That's enough for this week, I reckon. Um, thank you very much for being with me. If you like what I'm doing here in the shed, you can support us. You could just buy us a coffee by following the link that is on your screen now. And we deeply appreciate all um, the support that we get from you people uh, in through this way and other ways too. And uh, OMG, Bad Christian's Book of Prayers, along with my other books, are available in the shop at the coffee site. And um, if you buy it there, as opposed to going online to buy it to um, Amazon or wherever, um, then I will sign it for you. And if, uh, if you want me to sign it for a particular person um, or people, then just direct message me on Facebook uh, or on Coffee. And, uh, and I'll do that. Otherwise, I will automatically sign it to whoever is buying it. Okie dokie. So, uh, yeah, I think that's, that's just about it for this week. And um, I look forward to seeing you again soon. Have a good week. Um, be kind. We've already heard what a massive uh, force that can be in the world. Be kind to people around you. Be kind to yourself. Stay human. And I'll be seeing you very soon. Bye.